Welcome to this first lesson of our Analyst Prep Online GMAT video course. So in this lesson, we're going to talk just about the overall logistics for both the online and in-person GMAT administrations in the post-COVID-19 era. So let's go ahead and dive right into the exam structure and policies that are universal for both the online and in-person administrations. You're always going to have an approximately three and a half exam duration for the GMAT. You'll have four flexible sections, a quantitative section, a single verbal section, an integrated reasoning section, and an analytical writing assessment in variable order that we'll talk about in a moment. You'll have two optional eight minute breaks that are basically going to be after approximately 60 minute pods of test. And again, we'll talk about how those fit in in the overall flexible structure here momentarily. You will have an unofficial score preview provided immediately upon your completion of the exam. So you'll see what your score is immediately upon finishing, even though it won't technically be finalized for a little bit. Your official score, however, will be provided in approximately seven business days. So again, there won't be any deviation exceedingly likely at least that is the case from your unofficial score preview but this is basically to vet your score if you're talking about the online exam make sure there were no irregularities in your administration and it's also there to provide enough time to score your essay your scores will remain valid for up to five years after your test date and you have a maximum of five gmat attempts in any rotating 12-month period and eight lifetime attempts combined online or in, por in person. Now, either online or in person, the exam can be taken once every 16 days. So you have to wait 16 days between your administrations, but that is your uh, the minimum that you have to wait, or the maximum, I guess, that you actually have to wait. And you can always visit this website, mba.com slash frequently asked questions slash GMAT exam slash about for the most current online and in-person GMAT policies information. And we always recommend that no matter when you are watching these uh, course modules that you do as you get ready to take the exam and you'll always have to register for the exam at mba.com that you confirm that no logistics have changed because obviously all policies are subject to change at the uh, leisure of the GMAC who put forth the exam. So let's talk about the small differences that still exist between the online GMAT and the in-person one. So your online GMAT is going to be remote proctored through Pearson View and Pearson is the same company that administers most online or in-person GMAT exams. So they are uh, very experienced in this arena. You'll have the exact same sections and the exact same ordering options in the online exam as the in-person exam. And you will have on the online exam both a digital and a physical erasable whiteboard at your uh, use. So you will have to produce your own physical whiteboard. It has some specific dimensions, but roughly um, 30 centimeters by 50 centimeters or roughly 18 by 12 inches again confirm all of these specific details and dimensions for your whiteboard whiteboard usage when you are about ready to take the exam but those are the available note-taking methods and the online digital whiteboard can be relatively useful for taking notes in the verbal section because it may be faster for you to type your notes for say reading comprehension or critical reasoning than to do so physically but of course it does have some limitations when it comes to manually processing some of the math required for the quantitative section your score and this is important for the online exam cannot be canceled now again these uh, policies and procedures are always subject to change but at this time, the score for the online GMAT is going to be something that you cannot cancel. So just be aware of that as opposed to when we talk about the in-person exam, that can be canceled. You do, however, have a score preview function that is available before you select whether or not you want to send it to schools. So you have that option available to you if you take the online exam 
And there is only a single retest online allowed for the GMAT. So if you do two online administrations, you will have to then go to an in-person location for the remainder of your as many as seven lifetime attempts. So <clears throat> then let's take a look at the testing center GMAT. So you will have instead of an online digital and physical erasable whiteboard you'll have a five page dry erase spiral laminate notepad available for your scratch work so what that means is you get basically like this uh kind of uh, laminated menu that you can use a dry erase marker on but you can't actually erase it's kind of a unique little scenario you can buy samples of this online if you really want to practice but you're not going to be erasing the content on your uh, your notepad so it doesn't really matter you will have to ask for more uh, another spiral laminate notepad if you exhaust all the space on the one that you were given at the outset so one tactic that I recommend is to if you see that you are about to finish out your notepad at any time in the exam that you potentially uh, try to make your handwriting pretty big through the end of that section so that you can ask for more uh, dry erase notepad availability in between the sections and just get a brand new notepad. Then you do get an enhanced score report as a possibility at the test setter exam and that gives you much more detail on what your results were. They break down by content area, some of the question types, what percent you got correct, what percent you got wrong, and you just get a really nice useful resources you can t uh, consider potentially continuing your study to try to improve upon your official GMAT score and that score from the testing center exam can be canceled for up to 72 hours and again your test center exam can be taken earlier actually than the online administration 16 day limit because there is a kind of uh, loophole in their uh, their policies whereby you can take an online exam and you don't have to wait 16 days to go take an in-person test center exam if you really want to attempt the test again immediately so now let's talk about those section ordering options so order option number one or GMAT classic is the analytical writing assessment first that's going to be 30 minutes then you have the integrated reasoning which is another 30 minutes and then you have an optional eight minute break <clears throat> then you go right into the quantitative reasoning section which is 62 minutes exactly and then another optional eight minute break after that approximate hour uh, module and then you conclude with the verbal reasoning at the longest section duration of 65 minutes then in order number two you can do the verbal first again with an optional eight minute break afterwards the quantitative with another optional eight minute break and then the integrated reasoning followed by the essay for whatever reason the GMAC always makes the writing assessment begin or conclude all of the sections so you can't do AWA and then IR it's just the way they do it and then our third order is going to be quantitative first followed by the eight minute break possibility verbal reasoning another eight minute break option and then IR and analytical writing assessment again there is no definitive answer as to whether or not you want to pick one of these as preferable to the other except for your own personal preference the main consideration is whether you like to begin fast with whatever you believe to be the most important section or if you prefer having the warm-up of say your section between quantitative and verbal that you find you're better at or the analytical writing assessment in the IR is a warm-up that is relatively low uh, impact because obviously those sections have less impact on your uh, admissions uh, chances because they don't go into that 800 score that is ultimately so important so <clears throat> let's talk about that score and the GMAT's adaptivity so the GMAT has question variability and Broadly, that means that your performance on each quantitative reasoning or verbal reasoning problem broadly dictates the difficulty of each subsequent problem. So it's impossible to skip or return to any questions in any GMAT section because of the variability aspect. What you do on the prior question dictates your next one, whether it's harder, easier, or what have you, broadly. So the strategic implications are myriad. First, the earlier quantitative or verbal problems dictate the level of difficulty in matter more in your overall score 
the exam is trying to determine your proficiency level early on and doesn't know how good you are or are not at different content areas so you have a better opportunity to get a, a bit ahead of the game as it were if you do better earlier rather than later now you also have to guess on every question because you can't move on to another question if you don't have something input for said question. Then you want to check your pacing approximately every 10 questions to guarantee that you have an opportunity to complete the full exam. So you have to make sure that you finish. That is another way that the score can be rather negatively impacted is if you do not complete the sections. So you just have to make sure that you do so uh, with enough time to at least click through and guess at the end so then the scoring the thing that everyone cares about for the gmat first for the quantitative your individual scaled score is going to be 0 to 60 and your realistic scale is 9 to 51. from a percentile perspective your 50th percentile score on the quantitative is roughly a 45 out of that 60 or realistically 9 to 51 and a 90th percentile is a 50. People just tend to do better on the quantitative in aggregate. This is because math is a universal language. English is not largely. So then on the verbal section, our individual scale is going to be 0 to 60, but our realistic scale is going to be 6 to 45. It's slightly lower. But we actually have more room to grow at the higher end of the verbal section than we do at the higher end of the quantitative section. You can see we've got a 50th percentile of 28 on the verbal and 90th percentile of... 40 on the verbal so even if you're at the 90th percentile in verbal you have a realistic chance of improving as many as five points from where you are whereas in the quantitative if you're at the 90th percentile you really are only going to get up to a 51. the exam is structured in such a way that they will just start bombarding you with really difficult and time consuming questions if you start approaching that 51. so you just have less opportunity for improvement at the high end of the quantitative reasoning so for that reason for many students, your primary goal to begin is going to be to improve your quantitative to get into that mid-40s range that will make you competitive on that section before potentially shifting over to the verbal section and spending more time there to mine as many points as possible at the more accessible high-end curve that exists on that section. Now, the integrated reasoning is going to be an individual scale of 1 to 8, 50th percentile is a 5, 90th percentile is an 8 just a very odd little vestigial tale of the exam and then we have the analytical writing assessment and here we've got an individual scale of zero to six and it's in half point increments so you could get a five and a half you could get a four and a half depending on the averaging of the two uh scores that you get your 50th percentile here is going to be a five your 90th percentile is going to be a six your 50th percentile of five will be almost unequivocally sufficient for any business school application do not worry about getting a six on the analytical writing assessment not even really a 5.5 if you get a five it'll be sufficient and in one of our future lessons about the essay we'll talk more specifically about how you can guarantee that you basically get a five and no one ever asks you about your essays uh, ever again and then your overall score so it's only the quantitative and the verbal combined that go into the scale of 200 to 808 in 10 point increments they do not care about the AWA in the overall. They do not care about the integrated reasoning in the overall. Now that said, it doesn't mean that you completely will issue the integrated reasoning. I can speak from experience that there have been instances that I'm aware of where, especially in European and Asian schools, uh, they have asked for students to retake the exam to get a better integrated reasoning uh, score. So do not completely ignore the integrated reasoning nor the analytical writing assessment. The last thing you want is to get a verbal... Uh, a, overall quant verbal combined 700 and have somebody ask you to take this thing again because of the IR of the essay take the time to at least address these pieces and you'll never have to touch the GMAT again based on them alone because I have seen it happen and the 50th percentile for the quantitative and the verbal combined score is a 590 the 90th percentile is a 710 and obviously this all goes into the big question which is what is a good target GMAT score? And the answer to that is good enough for your program. So what you want to do immediately after finishing up this video is you want to research median scores and ranges at your target business schools. So visit official program websites, email admissions departments, and if you need to, do not be afraid to call admissions officers directly to try to get information about what you need from this exam. 
knowing your target is the most important first step as you begin your GMAT journey. So you want to make sure that before you really start diving in, you know what score is going to be necessary because you don't want to be preparing for a 700 if you only need a 620 to get to the school that you want. Concurrently, you don't want to plan for a 650 if you actually are targeting a school that has a median of 720. So go out there, research these scores and ranges for your target schools, and thank you for joining us and beginning this course that will continue through many more lessons in future videos.